everyone, and welcome to a special Belmont Media Center broadcast of the pregame show for Soccer Night in Belmont 2024. T today, the Belmont Marauder boys and girls varsity soccer teams take on their counterparts from the Woburn Tanners. I'm Scott Landry, joined by Chris Yu on commentary tonight and Jeremy Meserve and Tamara Impert on camera on this rainy last day of summer. Despite the gloomy conditions, it's our joy to welcome you to the broadcast and to thank you for tuning in. Chris, welcome. First Soccer Night in Belmont broadcast for you. It's a joy to have you here. Your daughter, Sarah, is one of the captains on this year's girls team. Yeah, this is great. Um, yeah, Soccer Night's always a great event. Uh, despite the, the rainy conditions, I think we got a, actually a pretty good crowd here. Uh, it's going to be exciting. I know the kids are excited about it, and we'll talk a little about what that means. Um, but I'm looking, really looking forward to this game. Uh, I know Wilburn is always very competitive. Uh, Belmont is competitive as well. Just as you know, through your typical Middlesex League uh, battle. Uh, so it should be fun. A lot of storylines tonight, Chris. One of them is uh, on the coaching staff for Wilburn this year is Paul Graham, the, one of the winningest uh, girls varsity soccer coaches in all of Massachusetts in the uh, soccer coaching hall of fame certainly uh, the winning winningest coach in belmont uh, history for any sport uh, he's on the woburn sidelines it's a little bit odd to see him there but it's great to see him yeah it is it is a little bit odd but uh, i'm sure uh, they'll have fun and i think paul did uh, overlap with uh, at least the seniors here uh, for the belmont belmont girls so uh uh, you know, always, uh, always a good, good. Uh, you know, always good to see see friends in other places, and uh, um, I'm sure it'll be fun. So there's a lot of pageantry with soccer night in Belmont, and we'll get into that as it begins. But let's just start from the players' perspective. I'm sure you've talked with Sarah. You've heard what she said about some of her friends. Why is this game such a big deal for the players? Yeah, I tell you, it's uh, it's really something that kids uh, on the soccer team really look forward to it's something they circle on the calendar and uh you know my daughter's been uh been uh you know a couple of, couple of years now that you know they made states right and they've gone to to games in states but uh i think they en almost enjoy this more uh and i think it's it's a uh, a lot to do with the, the the high school with the team you know with the kids and their friends are here uh and the whole second soccer sort of process i mean it's it's really a, a, a you know something that I know kids uh, on the team really truly look forward to and uh, uh, get excited about. This is the ninth of the soccer night, so I think Sarah, if she was here at the first, and her classmates, maybe she was in third or fourth grade, something like that. Yeah. My math skills aren't super sharp today, <laughs> but they were young, so it's it's presume it, we can presume that some of them anyway, if not all of them walked in the little parade that we're going to see at the beginning. One of the reasons I think this game is special is because all those players are thinking someday I might be on this field playing in the big game with everybody cheering for me when I score or prevent a goal. And uh, just sharing from your own family experience, how often were you at soccer yeah. night before Sarah made the team? Yeah, as a so Scott, I tell you, the, the first second soccer night that uh, that I came to, uh, you know, I can't remember, Sarah must have been, you know, third or fourth grade, like you said, uh, you know, went through the second soccer program. And I think that night they played, um, I can't remember who they played, but uh, they had, and, and maybe you remember, but they had, Belmont had a had a star player. Uh, I think she went Carrie. on to play, yes. yes. And uh, she was actually injured and they weren't sure she was gonna play. And then I think she came in uh, the last 15 minutes. I, I, I remember. And she scored. Yeah. Carrie Allard. Yeah, I remember from the stands, I could see her getting warmed up. I was like, okay, she's going to go in. And sure enough, she went in and she scored. And, uh, and yeah, if that I was... recall that game, sometimes games conflate, but she came in, she was typically a star forward, but she shot the ball from about That's right. 40 yards out, like the 30 yard line on the football field. Just pretty much right on top of that, yeah. sails it over the goalie's head in a rocket. And yeah. it was the first time I had ever seen her play. Okay. And I'm like, okay, the hype is worth it if she can <laughs> if she can drill it from that yeah. far out. You know, many boys and girls in high school just don't have that level of, of skill that she has. Yeah. But yeah, that was a great start. And yeah. other memories from soccer night? Yeah, and I, I would say that, you know, that was my first exposure to second soccer night. And then, um, you know, as, uh, as uh, you know, Sarah's been... Uh, as as as, as uh, you said, she's a senior now, so uh, you know she's been a part of this. Uh, uh, this will be her fourth year, so uh, we'll. Uh... 
So now you're hearing uh, the, the the Champions League theme. Um, players uh, from both sides, Belmont Girls Varsity Soccer, Woburn Girls Varsity Soccer, are leading uh, youngsters from uh, the Belmont Soccer Association program, which goes all the way down to kindergarten, and some players from Woburn Youth Soccer, a little bit harder for the Woburn players to uh, travel here on a rainy night, get here on time. Uh, I think this is the first time Woburn's been playing in this soccer night. Uh, it's typically been Arlington or Winchester or Watertown the last couple of years. Uh, so uh, we applaud all those youngsters from Woburn who have showed and uh, many uh, from Belmont. They'll come out. So if you've watched Champions League, Champions League soccer from uh, Europe, uh, one of the biggest deals in soccer outside the World Cup, they always have processions and ceremonies like this, and it's really cool to watch. And it's cool to participate in. And each of these young kids, certainly, whenever they watch those Champions League games or another game here at uh, Harris Field uh, here in Belmont Center, they'll be thinking of this night, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, it is great to see that Woburn, some of the Woburn kids did make it down. Uh, as, you, as you said, Scott, it's a little bit uh, a little tougher from uh, Woburn, but uh, great to see. So... Belmont uh, so Soccer Night in Belmont encourages the youngsters from Belmont Soccer Association to wear their sh colored shirt, uh, which is a tradition going way, way, way back uh, when it was called Belmont Second Soccer. And all the players from Belmont Varsity will be wearing a colored armband uh, to remember the color of the shirt that they played, that they uh, competed for in kindergarten through second grade. So it's one of the great little yeah. traditions here of Soccer Night in Belmont. Yeah, that really is. And I, 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 Scott, you know, one of the things that uh, I really enjoy, and you probably get this, uh, well, maybe I'll continue after. So now this we're break. seeing a new transition, much easier for us to see the singing of the national anthem. So uh, the, I think that's the Chenery Middle School Choir um, conducted by Sarah Carson, uh, who are bringing out all the singers. I heard them practicing uh, before the game in the rain, warming up their voices sounded quite good. We'll right. see if in prime time here, Chris, <laughs> they're just as good. We're going to honor the moment of silence now um, for anybody who's lost a loved one. Uh, and we're honoring especially Mike Camposano's passing, a longtime Belmont parent and soccer coach. Now, please rise for our national anthem.
Congratulations to the choir. Hit the high notes quite well, Chris. Uh, I'll just point out the courage. Unofficially, uh, I think there are about 45 singers. There were about five boys. So I'm calling <laughs> out those boys saying, nice job, yeah. not only to the boys, but to all the girls. But uh, it takes it, it takes a little bit extra to say, that's what I want to do here at Soccer Night in Belmont. Yeah, I thought that was a great rendition. Now the two teams meeting uh, each other, high five and before the game, as they will uh, after the game, uh, takes on a different feel. That is not tip that is not what uh, high school varsity soccer does typically before a game. It is what they do after the game, but it just sets it up for. Uh, a special way to compete, knowing that this is bigger than just a win or loss tonight. It's a celebration of soccer. For many of these players, it's their number one or number two or number three activity in their lives. Yeah. And maybe, oh, I guess, uh, I think the public announcers. Uh, They're going to announce the starting lineups, yeah. and we'll talk about that uh, a little bit. Uh, on our broadcast later, but Belmont's going through a lot of change and it's not only soccer programs uh, in, in the uh, for the girls team. This is the third year for Jemmy Taj as coach. Uh, the boys team, as we'll see later on this evening, has a first year head coach and all the athletic fields essentially besides Harris Field and the gymnasium have turned over for Belmont High School. So it's an ex it's been an exciting uh, chapter in Belmont sports history, but the players have had to be flexible, learning yeah. new coaches. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's, it has been, has been a transition. Uh, I think the fields that you mentioned, uh, I know behind us, uh, you can't see it, but uh, uh, the uh, yeah, ice rink hockey is being, uh, being rebuilt. Um, but I think that all the new fields will be uh, uh, quite nice. Uh, you can see in the, in the, in the foreground there, uh, the uh, there's a field there that gets used quite a lot, um, but so so I think it's been uh, been an upgrade. So talk about the season that Belmont girls varsity soccer f has had, Chris. Five zero one one. Yeah, five zero one one. So uh, you know I think uh, I think they're I think they're gelling. You know I think coaches. Uh, you know as you as you mentioned, this is his third year, and I think he's starting to uh, you know put his handprint into onto the program, how they play, sort of strategy, formations. You know. And uh, I think they're, I think they're, they're, they're starting to, starting to uh, come together. Um, a couple of uh, uh, sort of uh, new players, uh, underclassmen, and Scott, as you know, one of the exciting things about high school sports is uh, seeing sort of the new blood. There's always a transition. You have seniors that graduate, and I think, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of kids, and you know, they're like. What are we going to do when these seniors graduate, right? But somehow, some way, uh, you know, you have freshmen coming in and sophomores coming in that uh, that really add to the team, and I, I think you're going to see that tonight. Um, but um, yeah, five zero and one. Uh, the, uh, the last game that they played uh, was Tuesday night. They played Arlington, and it was a terrific game, just back and forth, real good battle, uh, real ended good. Ended in a tie. Ended two -two. in a tie, two two. Uh, great goalie play on both sides. Um, just a just a joy to watch. You know, just really good soccer, and so um, you know we'll look look forward to uh, same kind of same kind of brand of soccer tonight. So the Belmont starting lineup: Martha Demas will start in goal. Sadie Taylor, Madhavi Ramadas, Ashley Waters, and Dana Lair will start across the back. Elsa Kimberly will start in midfield, along with Anna Santos, Cassie Griner, and Sarah Yu. And then the forwards up top will be Lily Hovsepian and Danica Zika. Danica's had a couple of big soccer nights. Uh, her first year she came on, uh, she's a junior this year, and she made a lot of dynamic plays uh, in a game that Belmont lost, I believe, if I recall correctly. But last year, uh, she had a few goals in uh, soccer night. Um, yeah. And had quite a great game. Yeah, and Danica, as a freshman a couple years ago, she's a junior, as a freshman, really came onto the scene. Uh, I, I believe that year she may have been... I think she was the leading scorer last year. Uh, actually, I take that back. Um, but uh, prolific scorer for sure. Uh, last year, I think uh, maybe the fifth game of the season, she did have a, a ACL injury, unfortunately. And uh, and Scott, I know you're familiar with that with Two your, ACLs daughter, with your, with your daughter. daughter, Allie. Yes. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's one of the unfortunate uh, things about uh, girls' soccer. Uh, we do see that uh, too often. Um, but Danica... Um, uh, did have the ACL injury, and she's she's on on the on the road to recovery. It looks like she is not starting tonight. Uh, I think uh, Lucy, H I see Lucy Hines out there. 
So, um, so Lucy, a, a senior on the Belmont team, yep. um, like your daughter Sarah and a couple of other uh, players on the Belmont team, made the team uh, as a freshman and have, and have continued to yep. progress over time. Uh, so th it looks like Lucy's going to play in the midfield there, and uh, they'll likely just start with one forward up top, yep. uh, which will be Lily Hovsepian. Just about ready to get underway here. We play two 40-minute halves in MIAA uh, girls varsity soccer. Woburn with the kickoff in the away whites. On your screen from right to left, Belmont in the home maroon. Go their goalie is on your left, shooting at your goal to the right. So with Belmont, Chris, being 5-0-1, have they been winning more with tight defense, more with uh, lightning offense, or a mix of both? Yeah, I, I would say a mix of both. I think uh, the defense has been really good. I know, uh, uh, I think Martha Demas, who, who's, our, who's a sophomore goalie, um, has given up uh, 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 just, a, I, th I think, three goals, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but uh, she made some really big saves in the Arlington game the other night, so... Just three goals in six games, outstanding. We'll see if she can have a clean sheet, a scoreless game today. Sometimes that's a good thing if you're rooting for the goalies, but for the ratings, Chris. Yeah, that's right. You know, maybe a 10-8 to a eight little... victory <laughs> might be more what we're seeking here. Yeah. Ball off Belmont on the near sidelines. It'll be Woburn's throw. Woburn's goalie getting first action today. Uh, with the rain on the field, because it's turf field, it doesn't impact the game as much as it would be on grass. But one of the things it does, which we saw there, is it slows down the ball when it's on the carpet. Yeah. And it should give aggressive offenders on the front lines the ability to track down some long passes. Yeah, and I think the, uh, the wet ball makes it slippery for, uh, for the goalie, which, uh, which can be a factor. We'll see if that uh, becomes uh, foreshadowing by your commentator, <laughs> Chris right. Wu, later in the game. We'll see. <laughs> One of my children played a lot of goalie, and he always bought the gloves that okay. became more sticky uh, when, uh, when the rain came. That was a good play by Warburn defender there. A lot of long ball so far. Both teams trying to be spaced out in their structure. Should lead to some decent passing angles. Pass back now to Belmont center back, to Madhavi Ramadas, up to their center midfielder. Would help if I looked at the <laughs> girls' rosters, not the boys. I'm like, why am I seeing 14? <laughs> it's Elsa Kimberly who had made that pass. Good aggressive tackle by Madhavi Ramadas. Yeah, I know. I know you saw Madhavi play last year as a freshman. She's she's quite uh, really good ball skills. This is a chance. Yep, this, this is a chance here for Belmont. Reina up to Lily Hovsepi and Lily trying to win that ball touches it just a little bit too strongly. It'll be a goal kick for Woburn. For the most part, the action's been in the Woburn end. Um, not too much uh, action or scoring chances so far, but you always want to see that in the start of a game. Who's controlling the play and so far little bit more toward Belmont's advantage. Nice touch pass there. This is Cassie Griner with the lefty shot. Straight to the goalie. Her first save of the night. Yeah, and Cassie's uh, uh, one of the starting freshmen. Uh, who's, who's, who's made an impact this year. She's had a couple goals already this year. Elsa Kimberly with the attempted through ball, and Lily Hofsepian is not able to retrieve it. Good aggressive goalie play by Woburn. Like a foul on uh, Cassie there. A little bit of a push. 
Wolverine's goalie is also a sophomore, Mia Foster. They have three zeros on their roster, so trying to figure out which one was which. Hope I got it right. <laughs> Good action oh, there. Nice play. Nice play, Ashley. Ashley Waters for Belmont. With a nice ball, went up to Sarah Yu. Just goes over the line, Wolverine's throw in front of the Belmont bench. Dana Lear with the throw, Sarah Yu with the redirect, header. Now up to Lily Hovsepian. Lily unable to control it, back to Wuburn. Good short passing by Wuburn. Belmont thus far doing a good job of not letting the Wuburn front uh, forwards get any space. Yeah, Belmont's done a really nice job of uh, really controlling this game so far. Sarah Yu with the ball win, uh, passes it to herself. Nice through ball to Lily. She tries to get it back to Sarah, but the defender kicks it out past the end line. It'll be Belmont's first corner kick of the game. What does Belmont try to do, Chris, on the corner? Yeah, so, so Jemmy, Jemmy does have a couple of, uh, couple of plays. Uh, perhaps we'll see one uh, where Sarah will uh, roll the ball out. Um, but uh, so we'll see what kind of special, special sauce that uh, Jemmy might be cooking up here. In the rain here, we have some obstructed view angles. So we'll try to talk you through that. Sarah Yu with the corner kick, keeps it on the ground, goes through Belmont and the shot blocked. Wuburn looked like they had that scouted. And that is that is the special sauce, Scott. <laughs> Going right to it. Because Coach Jemmy wanted to play with the lead, so he goes with his best corner kick play. I have seen that work. Has it worked uh, so far this, this uh, year? We've, I think we've done it uh, three times. It has not worked this year yet. And it is one of those plays you can only do once once a game. <laughs> it's fun to, um, it's, I'm sure it's a blast for the players to yeah. be able to call plays and all be on the same page and see if it works. See if Ashley can take care of that. Nice play by Cassie. Off Belmont's Cassie Griner. It'll be Wuburn's throw on the far side. Chris, we see all those flags over there. Uh, one of the traditions of soccer night in Belmont is uh, to try to get the countries that all the players ulti you know, ultimately came from. Not necessarily first generation, in some cases second and third generation, but where they trace their heritage from on both sides, boys and girls. And uh, this year it's a little bit fewer flags than in the past. Sometimes it goes all the way down to like the 20 yard line on both sides. This year we're looking at about the 25. So missing a couple of flags, but it's, um, it's a great tradition to celebrate soccer in all these different countries. And soccer continues to grow here in the United States and will grow a lot over the next few years as the Men's World Cup is set to take place in Los Angeles. Yeah, it really is a great uh, great tradition, both uh, displaying not only the, uh, the sport of soccer being international, but uh, as a country, uh, you know, that, that, uh, that were made up of Im immigrants from, uh, you know, across, across the globe, so. Uh, Before our listeners, Chris, flood Belmont Media with corrections. What I meant to say was the Olympics are in LA, but <laughs> the World Cup will be in three countries. It'll be in Mexico, United States, and Canada. And I believe the finals will either be in LA or Miami. I'm forgetting on that. Yeah. But good call, good call, Scott. Keep those uh, protest letters <laughs> That's right. screaming. Get, a, get us some new broadcasters to <laughs> get the facts right. We'll, we'll, prevent, we'll prevent those coming in. So ball kicked out by Woburn past Belmont's uh, end line there. It'll be a goal kick for Belmont's excellent sophomore goalie, Martha Demas. 
Yeah, was even, Martha on the varsity team last she year? She was, back, yep. Ba she backed up, up? Uh, Emily Donahue. Uh, she did, uh, I think there was a couple games where Emily missed uh, because of uh, uh, dealing with an injury. So uh, she, did, she did play in a couple games last year. Thank you for joining us here for Soccer Night in Belmont here on Belmont Media. No score thus far in the game, as you can see on your screen. It's been a game, uh, not uh, no uh, tremendously strong scoring chances, but Belmont has had a little bit more control of the play. Uh, right now is perhaps Woburn's uh, longest time of keeping the ball in Belmont's end. We'll see if it opens it up a little bit for Belmont. Now up to Lily Hofsepian, Belmont's forward. Lily's been quite aggressive at trying to make the Woburn back four need to cover her. One of the things I look for when uh, to assess the effectiveness of a forward isn't always uh, goal scoring, uh, Chris. It's how many uh, fullbacks or backs on the other hand are paying attention to her and not to somebody else on the team. Because mm. a lot of the times you can make it easier for a teammate. Woburn with the run. Unable to get the shot on goal. It'll be another goal kick for Belmont. That was a good, good, uh, good pressure by Wilburn there. And well defended by Belmont, not giving the, not giving an angle uh, for the shot there. Um, I think that was, was that Dana Ash, or a Sadie on? I believe on, that was uh, Ashley Waters on that defense. Ashley Waters. Nice play by her. Good turn by Cassie Greiner, now to Elsa Kimberly. Back to Lucy Hines. To Ashley Waters, now That's to the left. That's Sadie, Sadie, Sadie Taylor, Taylor on the left. Good turn there. Anna Santos. Anna, one of the captains for Belmont again this year. She also served as one of the captains as a junior last year. Little bit of open field here. She could be a through ball. Trying to get it to Sarah Yu. And Woburn is just able to get a toe on it. Slowing down the path of the ball. Nice attempt. Back to Sarah Yu. We'll see the adjustments, I think, Chris, as the game goes on, that the ball just isn't traveling as fast or as far when it's uh, passed on the ground. Yeah, I think the rain is, uh, I think this may be the first time they've played in the rain. The angles are there. They're seeing the right thing. It's just the, it's uh, it's a slower game in the rain. My kids always loved playing in warm rain like this. <laughs> up to Sarah Yu now. Turns it to the middle of the field. Up to Katsy Griner. Nice pass to Elsa Kimberly. Elsa's likely going to look to cross here from the right side. And she puts it into the box and well defended by Woburn's defense. They had seven people get back. Now a little bit of space. One by Madhavi Ramadas for Belmont to Lucy Hines. Over to Sadie Taylor on the left, clearing it out. Good battle by Cassie there. Back to Woburn now. Woburn's getting in a good rhythm. Ball off Belmont, and it'll be a Woburn throw. So we saw Katsy Griner there. She's a freshman playing center, uh, attacking forward in the in the midfield. Chris, that's a big adjustment for anybody. Um, she's three or four years younger than many of the other players. How's she been playing? Yeah, she's been terrific. Uh, she didn't. She wasn't uh, starting at the beginning, and uh, ooh, and uh, I think. Uh, Maybe the third game she was playing, uh, she scored, Scott, and uh, the, the expression on her face was of, of shock. <laughs> she, she was, I think she surprised herself that she scored, uh, but she's, uh, she's been playing quite a bit the last couple games now. The first high school goal always a memorable one. That was a good defensive play by Dana Lair. On that, she was fouled, holding off two Woburn defenders. 
Nice play by Woburn. It's number eight, Kylie Setz. Made a couple of good turns yeah, in the midfield area, one of Woburn's top players. Yeah, nice, nice defensive play by Sadie just to getting getting it uh getting it out, out of danger. Looks like we have uh, 19 Zoe Marion warming up for Belmont. You anticipate she comes in for the midfield? Is that where I she's been so. playing most of the season? Yep. She's, uh, I believe she's a sophomore. Actually, I take that back. I think she's a no, junior. No, I think, she, I think yeah? you're right. I okay. think she's a sophomore. <laughs> Cleared by Woburn so that they could reset. It'll be Belmont's throw. About 15 minutes so far into this game. Even game. No real good chances yet. Um. Woburn's record is not as good as Belmont's 5-0-1, I know that, but I don't know their full record as some of their games did not post on the site. But they've played some of the tougher teams in the Middlesex League, including Winchester and I think Arlington or Lexington, two of those three anyway, and took losses in both of those games. But sometimes that prepares them for, uh, for a strong rest of the season to just get some of the top yep. ones out of the way. So we'll see how it impacts this game. Sarah you back on D, clears it out. Hmm. Two Woburn players near the ball in Belmont's box. A little miscommunication, I think, for Belmont in terms of who was covering that. But Belmont wins it back. Elsa Kimberly to Sarah Yu. You now up to Lily Hofsepian. Lily tries to redirect it, but doesn't get enough of it to get it around the Woburn defender. Back to Lucy Hines, now to Sadie Taylor. Looked like a handball there that the refs may have let go. Ball out, it'll be Belmont's throw. Throw in one by Woburn. Now Elsa Kimberly up to da outside to Dana Lair. Dana fighting for it. And the refs give it to, one gave it to Belmont, one to Woburn. It'll be Woburn's ball. Scott, I think I also see uh, Danica warming up as well, so. If she scores a couple today, maybe she'll, known, she'll be known as Soccer Night Danica. <laughs> Like Reggie Jackson used to be Mr. October in baseball. We'll see about that. Nice pass up now. This is Sarah Yu on the right. She's on side. Sarah taking to the corner for the setup. Just about two feet in front of her teammate. But great effort. It's exactly what she should she should be doing on that play. Another uh, center inside the box across. This time a little bit too close to the goalie. Yeah, Another good, save good, by. Good attempts there. That's yep. what you're looking for. Good step to win that ball by Dana Lear. Pass out. Sarah, you, your daughter, Chris, has been doing a lot of running here in the first half. Good ball win by her. Another cross set up. And Lily tried to turn and get it on goal, but it just goes to the left of the goalie. We'll have our first sub of the game for Woburn. That's number 10, Noelia Canito Sosa coming in. Unlike professional soccer, if people watch, coaches can reinsert players. Uh, when they get subbed out. So sometimes you'll see coaches that sub a lot just to keep their players fresh, particularly their forwards and their midfielders and others um, do not sub all that often uh, to try to work on the fitness of their players and keep them out there. For Belmont, it looks like we're gonna have uh, two, uh, their first two subs. Tell us about the players coming in, Chris. Yeah, so Danica, Danica, we've talked about Danica uh, recovering from, um, from her uh, ACL injury. And I believe she's on a time limit 
uh, I think she's up to 25 minutes uh, a half as uh, no, she's recovering from uh, that injury. And then number 19, uh, uh, Zoe Marion, uh, who's a sophomore, who's been playing, coming in as a midfielder. So we'll see where, uh, where they play. And Danica, despite being a junior, she's been on the team now for three years and she's a captain. It's, um, Belmont has had a junior captain the last two seasons. Uh, last year it was Anna Santos. She's continued as a captain. So Lucy Hines is coming out and I think that is Cassie Greiner also coming out. Yep. Danica with her first touch. Goes back to Elsa in the midfield. Elsa, not sure if she was intending to shoot that or not, but it I think counts <laughs> as another save for Woburn sophomore goalie Mia Foster. Good step up by Ashley. Now up to Danica. Danica tries to connect with Lily Hovsepian just a little bit ahead of her. And ball off Woburn. It'll be Belmont's throw. This is Dana Lair coming up for it. Woburn's back line does seem to play well as a unit. They're, um, they take away the most obvious pass or make it much harder for Belmont. So that'll be a battle to continue to watch as we see the game go on here. Yeah, they seem very, very, uh, very disciplined in the back there. They recognize that Belmont's forward is often going to try to tap or deflect or get, you know, to hold it as a, as a number nine player on the field, the, the furthest forward up. Uh, so Belmont is playing it pretty much by the book and Woburn de is defending it by the book. Good mm -hmm. win there by Belmont. That was Zoe Marion who came in. Could be her first touches on the ball so far tonight. Good win there. Woburn's number two. Woburn's number two is their junior midfielder, Nicole Ganji. One of their top players, I'm told. Danica with the ball win right around the Woburn defender. She Tries to get it to Lily Hovsepian, just a little ahead of Lily, but good continued fight by Belmont. Woburn smartly clears it out of there so that they can reset their defense. So that was sort of classic Danica, always fighting for the ball and somehow wins many of them. And she often surprises people by her speed and um, even with the brace on her left leg because of the ACL, she still had that burst of speed yeah. <laughs> that she's known for. Okay, we got another corner kick here. And uh, Scott, we've already used our secret sauce, so uh, I think this will be, this will be a try into the box. <laughs> See if they can head it in. <laughs> Belmont second corner. Chris is referring to one of Jemmy's, uh, Coach Jemmy's plays. Good ball, right height for a header. Just uh, the wind, it is blowing at about 10 miles an hour. I think the wind took that. I think you're right. Um, if, if any of you want to do a replay, just hit that button. Thank you for being with us here in the Belmont Media Center broadcast. We have a few new tools on Belmont Media this year. Nice shot by Sarah, Sarah Yu coming up. One of the tools is replay live on the broadcast. So. The producer today, Jeremy Meserve, was just showing us how we're, to do we're, that. We're getting fancy here. Make, <laughs> I think Jeremy may have thought that that was going to be a goal. He yeah, wanted us to be right. ready for the next time. Good win by Sarah Yu. But taken back by Woburn. Both teams have been a little bit more effective in this game, Chris, when they're trying the shorter passes over the long, longer passes, just given the 
weather conditions. Yeah. Foul on Belmont's Lily Hofsepian. And it'll be Ruburn's direct kick here. Dangerous Good here. Good fight. But again, well defended by Belmont, step for step with Woburn's forwards. Woburn doesn't like the call, thought that that should be their first corner kick. Referee thought otherwise, it, it was close. Looks like Monavie is gonna be taking the uh, goal kick. She plays it back to Martha. Back to the goalie, oh. Woburn plays it well. Dangerous. I think the call was that Woburn entered the box a little bit too quickly. But that that was a little bit of a strange and risky play. That was. If you want the goalie to be the one driving the ball, perhaps a little bit easier to just have her do it right from the start. Mm, nice, nice body. Good win Elsa. by Elsa Kimberly. Almost had Sarah Yu. We'll see if Sarah can keep it in. She just is about a half yard too late. On that, it'll be Woburn's throw. Just about 14 and a half minutes left in the first half. As you can see on your screen, it's a 0-0 battle thus far, Belmont and Woburn, here at the ninth annual soccer night in Belmont. So despite the rain, Scott, I think we got a pretty good turnout. Great turnout always is. I know our ratings are like sky high tonight, I'm Chris. I'm sure, I'm sure. Um, and part of what we do on these broadcasts is we know the players want to watch Soccer Night in Belmont for all the things that they're not able to see. It's truly a big event for them. So uh, we look forward to hearing the comments of both the Belmont players and the Woburn players. We clearly know the Belmont team uh, better than we know the Woburn team. So, but we're trying to honor Woburn for their good effort and their good coaching. I think the next sub for Belmont is going to be Nora Golding, number seven. Ball comes in, and Belmont will have the punt here. Um, Nora's dad, Sean, is one of the two principal organizers of Soccer Night in Belmont. So we're glad that uh, she will get into the game and looks like Cassie Greiner will re-enter the game in the midfield position on the next opportunity for Belmont to sub. Way to carry the ball by Woburn there and a long shot. That's Nicole Ganji. Yeah, that was a nice play. Nice save by Martha. Sometimes the goalie can um, follow the ball left to right, and I think Nicole Ganji was kind of counting on that. Good turn by Danica. Now up to Lily Hofsepian. Lily a turn back. And just continually marked well by yeah, Woburn Center I got to say the, the Woburn defense uh, is quite good. Anna nice Santos. Move. With the good move, but then Woburn stepped up for the tackle. A lot of space in the midfield when the players have taken advantage with a little bit more dribbling and short passing, usually been able to control it for an offensive play. Elsa Kimberly with the through ball here. Sarah, you thought she would go outside, but Sarah's hustle almost gets to the ball, but again, Woburn doing a good job of... It's a good play by, by Woburn to shield, yep. to shield Sarah from the ball. That was number 10 for Woburn, who would come in as a sub. Looks like a foul on Woburn there. It'll be a free kick for uh, for Belmont from the 35. Monavie's gonna be taking it. Does she have the range from here, Chris? Uh, I think this will be, I think this will be, she's gonna try to get into the box. Monavie Ramadas with the ball into the box. 
deflected by Belmont, but just uh, a little bit too far to win. Sometimes when nope. players all push up, it gives the other team the ability to counterattack. Belmont was ready. Yeah, that was a nice play by Monavie because uh, that through ball was going to give Wilburn numbers. Ball cleared, doesn't quite make the stands. Some of the kids down there wondering if they would get a souvenir. So we have a couple of subs coming in for Belmont. Coming out, Sarah Yu and uh, Kimberly Elsa. Elsa Kimberly, sorry. Yep, and coming into the game will be uh, Nora Golding playing uh, the right, right wing. And Cassie playing the, uh, looks like she'll be playing the uh, defensive mid midfield now. Nora looked like she was um, quickly fouled there. She wanted the call. Refs let it slide. Way to get into the game quickly. This is Lily Hofsepian. Marked the whole way by one of Woburn's cent central defenders who seem making it her mission to make life difficult for Lily, as she should. It looks and like this will be a goal kick for, for Wilburn. The center defender we've been talking a lot about is one of the captains for Woburn. Caitlin Clark, not the basketball player. <laughs> sure she's hearing that quite a bit. Of course, we're talking about one of the best girls basketball players of all time in the NCAAs, Caitlin Clark. Yeah, she's quite a, quite a phenom. Who should be Rookie of the Year for the WNBA's Indiana Fever. We're not able to keep the slippery ball in. Belmont quickly throws it in. That's Dana Lear up to Danica Zika. Another good defensive play by Woburn. Another throw in from Woburn. You surprised at all, Chris, by the lower scoring, uh, more defensive battle? Yeah, I, I, you know, this is the first time I've seen Woburn, but uh, their defense is quite good. So I think that's, uh, I think uh, that's uh, preventing some, uh, you know, better scoring, better scoring uh, opportunities. Um, I do want to mention. Uh, here we go, Cassie. Cassie Greiner. Oh, nice move. Good. So Good efforts a, by both teams there. Here's a counter opportunity for Woburn. Nice play by Dana to sort of thwart that. Now Cassie Griner again, back to the midfield. Nice through ball here. Can Nora Goulding retrieve it? It looks like she can. We'll see if she can cross it here. Good turn. Cassie Griner tries to pass it into the box. Unable, too many Woburn defenders between her and the goal. Chris, you were saying? Yeah, good attempt by uh, Nora. So Nora's one of three juniors on the team. Uh, Nora Golding, Danica Zika, and Farrah Harris. Unfortunately, Ferris is usually starts in the center back, but uh, I do know that she has had recently a foot injury uh, that's going to keep her out for, uh, I believe, a couple more weeks. So. Uh, I know she's uh, disappointed that she's not able to, to play soccer, uh, second soccer, uh, the soccer night, but, uh, but she's been a great center back for, uh, for the team this year. Really nice play by Belmont, um, by Madhavi Ramadas on the defensive side, carried it quite a long way, made a nice pass and gave Belmont an opportunity. Another one. Good, good ball win by Lily Hofsepian. Now Danica trying to use her burst of speed and quickness, but Ruben doing an excellent job of being physical and not allowing that turn. Anna Santos now up to Cassie Greiner. Cassie passes it a little bit too hard for Danica to retrieve it with her left, and it'll be another goal kick by Mia Foster for Ruben. Coming into the game for Ruben, Kylie Seitz. Kylie, I assume, sisters with number 19, Olivia Seitz. Kylie is a sophomore, Olivia a senior. <laughs> this 
So I always say the last uh, five, 10 minutes, the play really has been on, uh, on in the Belmont uh, offensive side. Here's a good Danica shot. Danica with the shot. Oh. Looks like from here, missed by about two feet. See if we can get that replay on that. You see it just missed there. Experimenting with his new toy. <laughs> and I think, uh, Scott, that might have been the best, uh, best opportunity for uh, Belmont tonight. Belmont has had a hard time beating the defenders uh, with uh, passes into the box. So Danica decided to uh, try something different, shoot. Uh, before the Woburn player get, uh, uh, gets physical and bodies her off the ball. Yeah, I think uh, Danica has been subbed out. I know Danica is on a, uh, a time limit as she recovers from her, uh, from her knee injury. But she made an impact in there. There's no doubt Absolutely. about that. Um, and Woburn is paying attention to her, so she's drawing attention away from some of her teammates, which will be helpful. Oh, nice move by eight. Return. An attempted through ball by Kylie Seitz. Good play by Sadie. Sadie Taylor for Belmont. Adavi Ramadas now up to Cassie Greiner. I'm not sure what no, that call is. I don't, I was going to ask you, Scott. <laughs> Behind the play, it's uh, like, you know, if his arm was the other way I would be thinking offsides but it has to be some sort of a foul must be a foul I didn't I did not see the foul yeah interesting and the ref that called it I didn't think he was pointing to this far up field so maybe we should have used replay on that <laughs> keep the referees honest there Chris yeah all right this is Lily Hofsepian Lily Tries to hit Elsa Elizabeth. Sorry, Kim Elsa Kimberly. Now to Nora Goulding, and Nora is unable to win the ball. So before Scott, it goes I know, up. I know, uh, you missed that name, but I must say I've been impressed with the number of names that you've gotten right. I know this is the first time you've. <laughs> I think it's a record, Chris, of numbers I might have gotten right. When my daughter was on the team and yeah. she's watching these games, she's talking about how I'm. Kind of right, where I'm mixing up somebody's <laughs> first name with another player's last name. Uh, um, it is a little tougher up here in the booth. I gotta say, uh, uh, I, I think I've, I may have said some some names wrong, and I and, and you know presumably I should know these players. But uh, so inside the broadcast booth, the secrets of broadcasters. If it were up to us, Woburn's numbers on their shirts would be way bigger, so we could actually read the numbers like from there. Ooh, nice shot by good chance by Woburn. Hits off the cross par and out. Their closest opportunity, yep. for sure. Under these conditions, it would make sense that an ugly goal, a, a competitive <laughs> scramble type goal, you know, instead of like a blast of a shot, yeah. uh, might win the game. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I think they may have called a handball there. So it'll be a kick and from Belmont. Letting it play on, but. Uh, really appreciate you being with us on this special broadcast for Belmont Media Center here at Soccer Night in Belmont. Uh, because of the rain here at Harris Field, uh, we're under a nice tent, and, but the tent has some poles. So if there are any obstructed views, uh, we apologize, but wanted to explain why you're seeing some of those. So hopefully Chris and I will make you uh, make it so that you're able to follow the action as the camera turns past those poles. So good win by Belmont. Belmont, again, uh, we'll see if Coach Jemmy at halftime decides to uh, change his strategy. He's still trying, you know, Belmont's players are still trying to hit long balls and haven't been successful at any but one. There's another long ball. Because of the quality of Woburn's defense. Yeah. It's not that Belmont isn't doing what they should on That's that, right. you know, um, but Woburn's defense has been up to every challenge except in the first couple minutes of the game and as Lily Hovsepian. Yeah, it looks like we have a corner kick uh, and Nora Golding's gonna be taking it. First time on this side, uh, on the far side. Uh, first time for Nora Goulding taking the corner. 
Belmont players make the run. Ball's up in the air. He header by Woburn. And they try to get it out. Belmont tries to get it instantly back in the box. That's Madhavi Ramadas. And it goes to the goalie's left. It looks like we got two minutes. Under two minutes. Under two minutes. The clock stops on the field. And it's controlled by the referees. Similar to professional soccer where if they want to add a little time, they can. Most do not. But we still have 0-0. Zero, zero. And we hear the whistle that ends the first half. A close, competitive half. Should be an exciting second half of this game. Final thoughts on the first half, Chris? Yeah, I think a little bit back and forth. I thought Belmont did uh, did control most of, the, most of the play in the offensive end. But the Wilburn defense is, uh, is quite, uh, quite staunch. So uh, it's going to be a good battle. So we'll be back a couple of minutes uh, before uh, the beginning of the second half here on this broadcast on Belmont Media Center. But for now, we invite you to stay tuned and to watch one of the coolest things of Soccer <laughs> Night in Belmont. Too many little games going on there to broadcast any one of them. This might be the highlight. Yeah. It's one of the highlights. Well, it's certainly the highlight for the kindergarten and first oh, yeah. graders who come and play on the field. But you'll see the cones being set up. And uh, we invite you to keep watching. Perhaps you're child or grandchild or your neighbors uh, the, the children of your neighborhood will be playing in this game so stay with us here uh, for soccer night in Belmont here on Belmont Media Center oh, we. special treat here uh, with me on the broadcast now is Adam Pritchard the athletic director uh, for Belmont High School and Adam thanks again for joining us soccer night in Belmont this is one of the biggest gatherings for Belmont uh, high school sports of any sport what does it mean to the athletic program to have so many folks even in the pouring rain show up oh uh, well we're very thankful that people came out tonight uh, this is one of our signature events not just at, in athletics but in the Belmont community it's a, the kind of event that other towns have started it's just an opportunity for people to get together, celebrate the sport, celebrate the youth programs, and, and get together and have a festival. And it's just an amazing. And we're just really fortunate that we get to carry on this tradition. It's funny, as I look at Harris Field, uh, it's perhaps the only thing in this whole section of Belmont that hasn't <laughs> undergone a lot of change over the last three to five years. What's that been like as the athletic director every year? Some athletic directors, I'm sure, it's pretty much routine from year to year. Not for you. Uh, well, we, again, super fortunate. We've got a brand new building. It's, it's really been amazing to be a part of watching this transition to Belmont Middle High School. Uh, it's, it's been a boon for our athletics. The town is growing. And uh, it's very interesting, you know, when you're when you're managing spaces and getting to work, and with with different committees in town that are supporting the schools, supporting athletics. So it's 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 been interesting. It's been fun, and we're we're, we're very thankful for all of the additions. And the hockey rink right behind oh. where we're standing, the hockey rink uh, has been torn. The old hockey rink has been torn down as we prepare for the new one besides the hockey team how many belmont teams are still playing not where they where you'd ideally want them to be right on campus because of all the construction well right now it's just hockey okay. um you know at one point you know before the fields open up on the other side uh baseball spent four years on the road um hockey right now we're very we're very thankful that that watertown has been hosting us um it's, it's been a great communication with the rink over there. And our, our, we have such a passionate hockey you know, group in town. And, and so the rink committee's done a fantastic job. They're communicating. We're, we're gonna have this amazing building right at our, right at our doorsteps for, for all the community. And, and uh, it's, it's just gonna be a great place. <laughs> What's it meant for the baseball team to be back on campus just to have uh, all their fellow students be able to come and watch them play on a brand new field. I have to say, having been been through it now for a few years, that's one of the teams and programs that probably got had was impacted the most through through the move. Um, you know, the the Brandon Graham Foundation is an incredible group of people. Casey 
uh, what they have done to support baseball, to support athletics as a whole. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, opening up that field this year, doing the dedication and Coach, Coach Brown being a part of that. So it was, it was special to, to have that field open up, to have all, all those people that were part of that, that organization and what they've contributed financially and, and, and just in terms of the hours. I, I, I really salute that group. So one of the, I don't know if it's fun or harder aspects of being an athletic director is when you have coaches turn over, you have to lead the search process and make sure that there's a good decision on who's going to be the leader of uh, many of the student athletes here at Belmont High School. So in the past few years, you've had to hire several coaches, including the two soccer coaches that will be coaching Belmont Varsity. Three years ago, you hired Jemmy Kanj. Uh, this year you hired Christopher Camille. So talk about how that process goes to find the right coach for the for this time for these Belmont athletes. It's a great question. Um, Isaac Taylor and our leadership team at the school is is very involved when when some of our positions open up, and uh, and so we we put together committees. We ask the students because their voices need to be heard. Um, I think I think you know we go through an interview process. Ult ultimately, we have people that that get moved to final interviews, and and um, but in the end, it, you know I think I refer back to the students and what what they let us know on the day to day and when a position opens up of what their needs are. And one of the sayings is you really need to meet students where they're at. Um, both coaches we have this year um, have done a great job. Jemmy's, his, he's got amazing energy. Um, it, the passion is, is there, and it's a continuation of, of what Coach Graham had done here at Belmont for so many years. Um, and Chris Camille is a, is, a, is, a, is a teacher and educator. I've gotten to know him in the last couple of years, and, and he's, he's bringing his type of soccer and he's worked in in the club group so i think having having two people that are passionate about the sport two people that really communicate well with the students who allow the, our leaders to be leaders who who understand where athletics fits in in our building at belmont high school and that we have student athletes and student comes first and so so it's a really a collective thing, um, and, and, and hopefully, and I feel very strongly that we land in a great place and we've got some great people. Nobody gets into education for the money. No coaches get into coaching high school sports for the money. They're, you know, they, they do it because they love the game. They love being a, a mentor um, and a coach. Um, how difficult is it to recruit a high number of qualified candidates so that it's a really tough decision at the end for the search committee and the administration of the school? I don't know if I can answer that well. I think that um, there's there's an amazing group of coaches out there. I, I do think it's, it's challenging um, to find coaches that can make coaching work within whatever the rest of their lives are. Probably one of the biggest challenges is whether they're a teacher working in a district or working outside of a district. Um, and maybe that, that, that trying to make the hours, they're, they're, they're odd hours. You know, our coaches have to be available to get on a bus sometimes at 2.45. I'm smiling because usually sometimes that turns into 3.15. Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's nights and, and I don't know if the word is sacrifice is because I coach for a long time and, and I know our coaches love it and it's a great and it's a great pleasure to do so. But but to find people that can make this work with with their life is, uh, I guess, at times a challenge. Um, but we've been fortunate that we have those type of people. One of the interesting stories of tonight's uh, varsity girls game is the return of coach Paul Graham. He's uh, uh, coached here for more than 30 years, the all-time winningest girls varsity soccer coach here and maybe in anywhere in Massachusetts. I, I've forgotten the stats, but you worked with Paul several years as a peer when you were the varsity coach and then you were the athletic director when he was still the coach. What's it like to welcome him but not wearing the Belmont maroon? Uh, Paul's an amazing man. He is, I have known him since I was a student at Belmont High School. Uh, Paul is a proud graduate, class of 1964. I know that he started coaching 
soccer, uh, 1975. He's, I will tell you, and I'm going to speak to it a little bit later. Um, he was one of the people that were involved in founding Belmont Youth Soccer. Um, as a varsity coach, he was he was the coach that was involved when our parents started a parent organization. Um, you know, he he he. In his own words, I read that he said he was a proud townie. And um, I would say anyone that's had the experience around him is, is proud. And I, I, I think when I heard that, sometimes you hear the word townie and it, and it has some sort of connotation. But the reality is it's a commitment. It's a commitment to community. It's, it's, it's a love for, for the people around you. And, and for him, it's for a love for students. So frankly, having him here is an absolute joy. And, and I've ran into a lot of people tonight who have nothing but admiration for him. Loves. Belmont. That's why he, I think, describes himself as a townie. But more than his love for Belmont is the love for mentoring young players. My daughter benefited immensely from Paul's mentorship. Um, one of the things, since you were speaking about him, that I'll just share publicly is my daughter tore two ACLs while she played here. Paul couldn't have been better. There wouldn't have been a better coach for her. Senior year, Allie blew out her knee as a captain, and Paul's like, well, now I have my assistant coach. And he yeah. gave Allie leadership responsibility. And Allie is a stronger person today because of the way Paul engaged with her just in that particular situation. So I look forward to your remarks after the game about Paul. And it's just a wonderful continuation of what he's done. None of us would be standing here for Soccer Night in Belmont. And Belmont's soccer program wouldn't be anywhere near that it, near as, nearly as strong as it was if it wasn't for Paul's contributions over many decades. You know, I, I will add that um, I could say there's probably 50 or 100 people here that would come up and share a similar story. So I thank you for sharing that. Um, I get to be a part of an athletic program that has a lot of coaches, and I haven't done it, but I, I know the dedication. I know the the ups and downs sometimes of, of dealing with athletics and competition, and it's 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 wonderful moments, and it can be hard times, and, and frankly, it's very meaningful for student athletes and for their families. And so when you have somebody that puts in that type of care, it it, it, it lands and um, you, you, you spoke to it very well. As we look to the second half, just briefly, what do you expect? I don't know, these are two very good teams right now. I was telling Coach Kane, I said, I really, I really love this team. Uh, they, they've shown toughness and they're, they're unselfish. And, and uh, but, but at the same time, you know, Woburn, Woburn has has shown that they're they're meeting the task tonight. I'm I'm not a soccer person. I'm a basketball person, but I, I just I really enjoy watching watching high quality soccer. And uh, it seems like these two really good teams. So your guess is as good as mine. But I know I know who I'm rooting for. It is a competitive game. He's Adam Pritchard, the athletic director here uh, for Belmont High School. Adam, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. And thank Appreciate you for it. all your support of Soccer Night in Belmont. Appreciate it. Just about ready for the second half here at Harris Field. Chris, you will join me once again on the commentary. We thank you for sticking with us through halftime. Chris, any insights walking around the field uh, for what we should expect here in the second half? Yeah, no, I don't think, uh, looks like uh, Bellum is coming out in sort of a similar, similar formation. Uh, not, any, not any lineup changes. One of the things I always look for, which coach tries to change the X's and O's a little bit uh, uh, coming out of halftime after hearing from the players and saying what's working, what, what can we do better. I think both teams are comfortable probably with the way that they're playing. Um, Belmont is getting a little bit more of the action. They just need to... Can, uh, take a lot of midfield play in my mind and turn them into better scoring opportunities knowing what Woburn is trying to do on defense. I think both teams would benefit from shorter passes instead of the longer passes because of the weather conditions here. We'll see if any of that changes. Oh, One thing of note is that we see number nine for Belmont out there. She just um, redirected a pass. That is Dana Kazika, one of Belmont's most dynamic offensive players. You've mentioned, Chris, in the first half that she has kind of a minutes restriction as she is recovering from an ACL tear. And um, it's interesting that Coach Jemmy wants yeah. to start her instead of have her come off the bench. Yeah.
Nice play by Lily. When I was coaching soccer, not at this level, but I learned from all of uh, my smarter assistant, uh, my smarter uh, co-coaches, that a disproportionate number of goals happen in the first five or last five minutes of a half. So maybe Coach Jemmy is trying to uh, take advantage of that by putting one of his best finishers, Danica Patrick, Danica Zika, out there. Nice pass up to Sarah Yu. This looks like it's going to be open for a cross. Let's see what Sarah can do. Pass it back to Dana Laird. Dana tries to get it back to Danica and unable to connect. It does seem that Belmont has had um, a little bit more effectiveness offensively when they're going... Uh, up the sides instead of right through the middle. Um, I think that's driven by Woburn Center D's have played um, nearly a flawless game thus far. Yeah, they really have. Nice play by Woburn's left midfielder on that play, taking the ball away. A lot of open field There's in the middle counter. of the field. There's a counter by Woburn. But Elsa plays it nicely. Used her body quite well to shield the defender. Shield the offender, rather. Good step up by Dana. Does look like the rain has subsided a little bit here. There's Danica There's showing Danica's her speed. Burst of speed again. She has the ability to cross it, but she smartly, and I think intentionally, Chris, just um, yep. uh, kicks the ball off the Woburn defender's leg so that Belmont will get a corner kick. So your daughter, Sarah, takes many of the corner kicks for Belmont. Is that one of her more enjoyable things to do? Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on those corner kicks. <laughs> From the far side, here is... Let's see if she can get a good one here. Here is Sarah Yu. Belmont seems to be lined up conventionally in the box. Most likely looking for a header on this one. Waiting for the referee's whistle. And now gives her the green light. Ball in the air, won by Cassie Greiner, and then goes off a second Belmont player. I think that was Lily Hovsepian, and out behind the goal. You always like to be the first to the ball on those corner kicks, and Belmont was able to be first to the ball, but not make the combination that yep. resulted in the goal. Let's see if we can keep it in the, in the end here. That's Lily Hovsepian with the ball win there. Referee calls it off of her. Woburn's throw now. Here in the second half of Soccer Night in Belmont, Scott Landry and Chris Yu here on the commentary. We appreciate you joining us. If you have relatives from out of town and they're wondering how can I watch this game live, they can go on any internet browser to belmontmedia.org slash public TV. All one word, public TV, belmontmedia.org slash public TV. Oh, nice play by number seven, Wolverine. Ooh, nice play, Dana Lara. She plays it back. Dana very aggressive on that. She's the outside right, outside back on the right side, but she stuck with the play to keep winning the ball and keep competing. You've called out number seven for Woburn. She's played a strong game. That is one of their captains, senior Riley Anderson. Yeah, she's, she's handled the ball quite a bit tonight. Looks like there was a foul on Belmont. Free kick by Woburn, number one taking it. That senior captain back, 
Caitlin Clark. Danica with the turn here. Now hits the through ball of Lily Hofsepi and she will have a get foot it, race before it, the goalie and the goalie, Mia Foster. Nice play by the goalie. Makes a dive, a little bit dangerous for her. Um, we've seen goalies uh, get either the ball or a cleat in the face when she dives like that. She did dive face first, which uh, feet first, which was smart. But save of the game so far. Good offensive opportunity for Belmont to use their speed and go to the outside. This is Elsa Kimberly now up to Danica Zika. Danica with the turn, and it looks like she's going to break in here. Nice tap to here herself. Go. Here we go. She's going in. She takes the shot, and it goes oh. wide. I thought that was in. <laughs> she knew what she wanted to do. She was setting it up. Even though the defenders were trying to take her shot, Danica wisely paused so that she, the defenders would keep moving to give her a little bit of space, and she got good foot on the ball, but unfortunately just to the right. Yeah, that was a nice play. She really did uh, take her time. It was very effective. Things opening up a little bit in the second half. Part of that, I'm sure, is... Coaching and strategy, part of it is fatigue as we, many of these players have now played 50 minutes in the rain. Part of it is just knowledge of what the other team is trying to do. Yeah, I think it is uh, lighting up the rain. And we have the lights here coming on in Harris Field. And we do invite you, if you're watching this broadcast from Belmont, um, most of the folks in the stands now do not have their umbrellas up. So if it's misting, um, it's not misting badly. Um, so these players would love to have your support if you're able to come on down. Yep, and uh, this is a doubleheader. It'll be a boys game. Yep. Nice, nice pass to herself by Cassie Greiner there. Tries to turn around the Woburn defender. Well done. I Woburn, that's Sadie Taylor who tried to hit the through ball into the box. Again, well defended by Woburn. We've said that quite a bit tonight. Back to Sadie Taylor. Good move by her, now up to Cassie Greiner. Cassie has a little bit of space, now up to Anna Santos. Anna tries to split the defenders. She's able to do it, but her pass to herself, just a little bit strong. Woburn clears it. Now it'll be Sadie Taylor on the throw. Now back to Sadie Taylor. Sadie with her left, tries to get it to Anna. Santos, Anna thought Sadie was gonna pass it inside the box and she passed it outside to her and it'll be a Woburn goal kick. Yep. Belmont getting a lot more open space now in the office, offensive end. We'll seem... see if they can convert. Yep. Lily battling there. Lily's had a number of battles with the Woburn defense. She's drawing a lot of attention there and very competitive. Let's see if we can reverse fields here. Back to Ashley Waters, to Madhavi, Ramadan. Nice turn by her. Can she get it to Cassie Griner? Not quite, won by Woburn. Woburn now attempts to hit the throw, through ball. Won by Ashley, now to Sadie. Over on the right side, picked out of the air by Sarah Yu, but nice play by Woburn's Nicole Ganji there. Still maintains control of the ball before the pass. Woburn making an attempt to play more possession right now in the second half. That might have been in the best uh, offensive uh, 
pressure by Woburn there in the second half. We'll see if Here Danica, Danica can Danica. beat her again. Again, her quickness. Is, it surprises people every year here at Soccer Night and throughout the Belmont Girls Varsity season. But Belmont not able to keep it in. Woburn's throw in. Under 29 minutes left here in this contest. We still have a 0-0 score, but the game is opening up a bit. These close games keep the drama high, which we like. Now Anna Santos on the partial break-in. Tough ball to control, and Anna keeps battling on it. Now shot by Lily Hovsepian. Unfortunately for Lily, straight at Mia Foster, Woburn's goalie. Not too difficult to save for Mia. My unofficial uh, stats would say Mia's probably got about five, six saves. But some of her better plays are things that wouldn't count on the stat sheet for plays when she's come in. Yeah, she's made she made that one really good save the second half uh, coming out. Um, so she's been solid for sure. Beating beating Belmont players on some long through balls. There'll be a free kick for Woburn now from their own 30-yard line on the football field. Trying to hit a through ball there, cleared out by Belmont Sadie Taylor. We have two subs coming in. Belmont sub is number seven, Nora Goulding, and Woburn substitution is number 24, Sabrina Lavita. And looks like uh, Nora came in for Danica Zika. Danica on the time limit uh, per half. Good back and forth action between the Belmont Marauders and the Woburn Tanners tonight. That was Nora Goulding just into the game trying to do that turn. Now to Sarah Yu. Good quick pass by Sarah on the attempted give and go with Elsa Kimberly. Elsa staying aggressive, winning the ball back. Now to Sarah Yu. Sarah was trying to connect with Nora, but it Ended up closer to Lily Hofsepian. Nice play by Lily. Cassie Greiner trying to maneuver around Woburn's left midfielder and unable to do it. It goes off of her. It'll be Woburn's throw. Coming back into the game for the first time in the second half is number 10 for Woburn, Noelia Canido Sosa. So I think uh, we have Lily Cook who's a sophomore uh, getting ready to come in. And uh, uh, Scott, when she does come in, she usually plays an uh, uh, offensive position. So we'll see where she comes in. Lily has the um, honor of having both of her parents as assistant coaches on the team, Ben and Madeline Cook. So it looks like we have another corner kick. Sarah, are you gonna take that corner kick as we see Lily Cook come into the game? We see her bright yellow wristband, meaning she played on the yellow team in her first couple years in Belmont soccer. Now the corner from Sarah Yu, unable to get the header on the ball by Belmont, won by Woburn. Good step up by Dana Lair to try to keep it in Woburn's end. Dana again. Nice play Good by job Elsa. to settle by Elsa. Now up to Cassie Greiner. Cassie tries to feed it through to Lily. And Lily Cook. We have two Lilies in the game now. Lily Hofsepian and I think, Lily Cook. Uh, Lily came in for. Oh, did Lily she come came in? in for Lily? How's that? Aha! Uh -huh, there you go. Nice of Coach Jemmy Kanj to make it easier <laughs> on his broadcast team. Good effort getting back by Belmont. Nice play by Ashley. Nice step. 
Elsa Kimberly. Out of Nora Goulding, back to Sarah Yu. Sarah gonna see about using her burst of speed. Well defended by Woburn. Sarah's attempted cross goes off the Woburn player and now she'll have a chance to throw it in. She doesn't get many throw-ins, Chris. It's usually Dana Lair on that side. Usually it's Dana. Here's a counter by Woburn. So we've talked about uh, Woburn defensive line being quite good, but uh, Belmont line's defensive line is quite good as well. This is Nora Goulding on the nice pass by Cassie Griner. She centers it. And who looked like it that was going to be a beautiful point <laughs> blank shot, but the referee uh, was there. He was on line he to was on call line. it offside by Lily Cook. That was a nice play. That would have been fantastic just two minutes into the game if she would should have, would have been able to net that. Good win in the air by Elsa Kimberly. Now Lily Cook. Good aggressive action by her. You like yep. to see a sub come in and change the pace and flow of the game, and Lily Cook has certainly done that. She has. Good energy. And this is Lily Cook with the turn. Unable to beat the Woburn defender, but Sadie Taylor comes up. Now back to Ashley Waters, to Sadie. Now to Anna Santos. And a nice job of continuing to keep the ball there. Tries to hit Nora Goulding on the, thr on the through ball. Cleared out by Woburn, another throw in there. This is a good sequence here by Belmont. Let's see if we can uh, put something in here. Good step by Belmont's Dana Lair on that side to keep it in Woburn's end. Another ball win by Dana. Make it three. Now Sadie Taylor tries to connect with Cassie Griner, but Woburn steps in front of that pass. I think one of Belmont's most aggressive Ooh, stretches speed. of three or four minutes here. That's Nora Goulding on the right. Woburn has to clear it again. They've had a few defensive clears as Belmont has been putting a tremendous amount of pressure in the last couple minutes. Now back to Dana Lear. She gets it in the box. Can Belmont beat? Woburn drops the ball. Mia Foster, wet ball perhaps. Both teams might want to keep that in mind that it's a little bit more difficult when the rain comes for the goalie to handle the ball. I think that was good pressure by Lily Cook. I think that forced the uh, goalie to uh, to ju juggle it there a little bit. Looks like a foul. Cassie Griner had to go to the ground to earn the call from the ref. <laughs> Even though she's a freshman, she it's smart move by her. Yeah. If uh, Monavi taking this uh, kick from 35. See if she can get it into the box, create an opportunity. Adavi Ramadas with the ball in. Belmont tries to get ahead on it, but Woburn wins that. Collision out there, refs let it go, and Woburn clears it up. Now back to Madavi. good little touch pass to Dana Lair. Dana keeps it in. Woburn passes now to their left back. Nice little attempted pass up to the sidelines and it is knocked off of Woburn's player. Belmont's throw, Dana Lear now into Sarah Yu. The Woburn player steps in front. Dana will get a second chance for that throw. Coming back into the game, the, the Lily swap, we'll call it. <laughs> Lily Hofsepian in for Lily Cook. Nice play. A nice five minutes or so yep. by Lily Cook. Real good contribution there. Somebody, 
Now, Cassie Greiner with the pass to Sarah Yu. Sarah tries to give and go. Doesn't work there. Wubrin tries the counterattack. And smartly picked up by Martha Demas. That might Haven't have been, called the, her might name. Have been the first time yeah. uh, this half she's picked the ball, touched the ball. Gives you an idea of uh, where the play's been this, uh, this half. So we're just, just over the halfway point of the second half of action. As Chris just summarized, Belmont has had a little bit uh, or much more of the control of play in Woburn's end. But they haven't uh, been able to put one in the net yet. At what point do they start pressing, do you think, Chris? Yeah, I, uh, I think uh, we're going to just keep going as it is. I think we've had a couple of opportunities. Danica had a nice opportunity. Lily had a nice opportunity. So you know you don't you don't want to uh, press too much. Uh, that gives uh, gives an opportunity to the opponent to uh, to have a counter, and uh, Wolverine do, does have some threats on offense. So I think you're right. Belmont's gonna uh, keep playing the way that they're playing. They're getting more offensive opportunities. Maybe the last five six minutes, they change some things up to get more on the attack. Nice direct kick there, had enough length, yep. uh, had enough pace on it. Um, but unfortunately for Woburn, and fortunate for Belmont, it was straight at Belmont's yep. goal. That was a good attempt. Martha Demas. Cassie makes a nice move. Nice turn by Belmont's freshman midfielder, Cassie Greiner. Anna Santos trying to keep it in. Um, she is not able to tap it off of Wuburn's player, so it'll be Wuburn's throw in. Two subs for Wuburn coming in, number 16, and I think number eight. Number 16 is Kaylee Curl, and number eight is Kylie Sates. Uh, Curl is one of three sisters on the team uh, Kaylee, Michaela, and Molly. Uh, my guess is Michaela and Molly are twins since they're both listed as freshmen. Yeah, we'll go with that. No question it was a foul. The question on that one was, was it going to be against Cassie? Who was it? Or was it, it going to be against Lily? <laughs> All right, Wolverine with the free kick from the 30 here. Header by Sadie Taylor, now up to Cassie Greiner. She sends it over to Nora Goulding. Nora with a quick touch, but Woburn rightly anticipated that. And now up to Woburn on the left sideline. Nice job cutting it in. Pass up. We'll see if Madhavi can win the ball or let it go past out the baseline. She Good does play. a nice job of shielding. I heard a whistle, and uh, the referee is signaling a goal kick. We have a substitute coming in for Woburn. That's number 20, Molly Curl. So now I think two, of the, three two of the three sisters okay. are in. Good deep goal kick by Woburn. Sorry, by Martha Demas for Belmont, but won by Woburn. Looks It'll like be a, a goal kick. A lot of play like that throughout the game, Chris, where it's just two players competing for the ball, where you don't see too, too much of an advantage one way or another. Looks like we got a timeout. Did you see who who I might did. have called the timeout? I, d I, I did not. I did not see that. Unlike the National Football League, you don't have a referee <laughs> in stripes pointing toward one side. The reason I asked is I was curious uh, if we knew who called it, who might be trying to initiate a change of some sort in yeah. terms of what they're doing, or they just want to do more of the same. So let's assume for the moment that it was Coach Jemmy Kanj. 
uh, for Belmont calling that timeout. Uh, if you're if you're Coach Conge, what are you saying to your team right now? Anything you want to yeah, I would reinforce say, or it, change? Yeah, I'd say uh, you know continue the the pressure. But uh, you know, there's been a couple couple times now because the the ball is on our offensive side. Uh, Wilburn has the opportunity to counter. And just to be just to be wary of some of the speed. I know number two uh, for Wolverine's, uh, she's quite fast, and uh, I think Dana Lair knows that, and uh, she's checking her. But uh, that's that's what I would be uh, that's what I'd be saying to uh, to the Belmont team right now. Yeah. The other thing, you know, the wind comes and goes uh, so far tonight. Right now, the wind it's it's about as windy as it's been. The wind, I, I I think, is coming from left to right yeah. on your screen, so that would favor Woburn. Um, maybe the coach is talking about that too, not to pinch up too much uh, and to watch, uh, to expect that the ball maybe is going to travel an extra 5 to 10 yards um, going in Woburn's offensive direction. Yeah, I think you're right. I think the wind is uh, is picking up. Sometimes the crowd at Soccer Night in Belmont is a total sellout, more than 2,000. Yeah, the rain has impacted the uh, attendance a little bit, but still a good crowd, I would say. I would say close to 1,000 here tonight. We'll see if it picks up in the boys' game. Nora Goulding using her speed to put pressure on Woburn. Wolverine able to keep it in play there. Belmont moving up about 15 yards on each one of these throw-ins. So this will be Dana Lair again on the throw-in to the right. Sour U tries to kick it back to Dana, and it uh, goes a little bit to Dana's right. So out of bounds off of Belmont. Wolverine's throw. One nice thing about uh, soccer night is plenty of ball, ball girls and boys. Yes, keeps the action going. Shot by Belmont, and it goes to the right. Nice shot by Lily Hovsepi in there. Quick turn. Dana had thrown uh, three uh, throw-ins right in a row. The best was her third. She got it right to Lily. And Lily very quickly put a shot. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, not on goal, but... Uh, good offensive action and play by her. Ashley Waters with the ball win. And now Cassie Griner for Belmont. Back to Anna Santos. Anna up to Nora Goulding. Now Sarah Yu back to Dana Lair. Good way to control the ball by Dana. Tries to connect back with Sarah a little bit too long for her. Back to Dana. Dana's been one of the most active players here in the second half. Now to Cassie Griner. Cassie with the left-footed shot. Didn't have too much on it from 30 yards away. Easy save by Mia Thomas. Easy save, but good idea. Mia sometimes, Foster, rather. Sometimes getting those balls in, you never know what's going to happen. A little juggle by the goalie, particularly with the wet ball. Now, Elsa Kimberly. Ooh. We'll see if Madavi goes back. She does. Ooh. Dangerous in the middle of the field. Luckily for Belmont, no player was immediately there. A little bit dangerous on that one. That With was, the back that was, passes, uh, it's tough to, to try to kick it in the middle of the field, yeah. certainly on the ground. Yeah. Belmont was, will take it. That was fortunate for Belmont. I think uh, one of the Wilburn girls took a pretty good spill over there on the far side, but it looks like she's she's up and uh, doing uh, doing fine. Martha Demas with the goalie kick here, won by Dana Lair. Dana again with the win.
So much of Woburn's action, Chris, this second half has been on that side. Yep. So we've been calling Dana's name quite a bit. I think uh, Woburn does, does try to play it through that left side. Looks like Danica is getting ready to come back in. I think uh, I think uh, the strategy for Jemmy was to play her the first uh, 15 minutes and then the last 10 minutes. Uh, so keep her within that 25 minute uh, time limit and uh, see, see what she can do here. So she's coming into the game for Anna Santos and coming in for Rubin is number four, Leah Finn. Leah is a junior. So part of the change will be uh, Nora will move to the left, I believe, and uh, Danica is on the right. Well, actually, I think Danica and Lily are both playing uh, playing forwards. Oh, well, so it'll be, be a it. direct kick for Woburn after that foul. It's close enough, and based on her last uh, long distance uh, kick. She definitely has the range to score, so we'll see what happens here. Fortunately, numbers too small, <laughs> or my eyes are too old, or both. It could be both. Could to be, be both. able to see which Woburn player is attempting to either score right, or so place it in got the a, box. A three-person wall here. Excellent kick into the box, header, and it goes off the post, but it's one. Great save. Great save, great Way save. Way to be alert. That was right uh, place at the right time. Yes, indeed. That might have been Dangerous. the best chance, best chance of the night for both teams. Great header to redirect, put it in a place where the goalie had no chance to save it until it hit the post. As you mentioned, Woburn's one of two chances tonight that went off the crossbar or the, the side post. Now Nora Goulding attempts to get the shot off. Okay, this will be a corner. And this will be a corner for Belmont. We're in store, I think, for an exciting last nine minutes of this game. Yes. Stay tuned after the game for both, for two presentations. One, the player of the match, uh, which will be a tough call for whoever's picking that right now at a 0-0 game. And then there'll be a special presentation by Adam Pritchard after that. Oh. Corner kick anticipated by Mia Foster and that one in the air. Nice play by her. Goalie did it, didn't anticipate, did anticipate that one. Came a decent amount out to win it in the air. Nice uh, aggressive goalie play. Nice win there by Madhavi Ramadas. Now up to Cassie Griner in the middle of the field. Cassie gets it to Dana Lair, uh, sorry, Danica on the right. Danica, nice turn. And well defended by Woburn. Woburn, it goes off of them. So it'll be another corner kick for Belmont. And Sour U will get perhaps her fifth or sixth corner kick attempt tonight. I think it's getting exciting, Scott. We will see. <laughs> this is winning time. Any goal now can be tight. Goes off the crossbar, but stays in. Oh. So close. Oof. The the edge of the crossbar oh. over the goalie's hands. Yes. Sometimes you'll occasionally see those go directly in off the corner kick, and they would count off the corner kick. Yeah. Luckily that for Woburn, it uh, didn't bounce off the crossbar and straight into the goal. So. Remains a scoreless game. Just under seven minutes here on the field to go. Now Lily Hofsepian with the turn. Won by Woburn. No foul called on that aggressive tackle by Sadie Taylor. I guess they're mm. calling it oh. off of Belmont. If we replayed that, Chris, I think it would be a bad call by the ref, but we'll let it slide. We will. Maybe a makeup call for the non-foul call, but now Nora Goulding, one on two here. She wisely tries to turn it back. Well defended by Woburn's number three, hmm. Maeve O'Connor. 
Not sure uh, what happened down there, but uh, oh, I guess they called a called a foul on uh, sort on of foul. Belmont. Good win of that head ball by Cassie Griner. Now to Dana Kazika. It looks like she's going to be able to get a shot here. She clears space for herself. She puts it on goal, mm. and it goes straight to Mia Foster for another save. Good defense for the Woburn goalie. Danica has a really nice offensive repertoire, and on that one, she kept moving it to the right to create some space, hopefully get the goalie to move to that side, and then shoot to the left side, but it, her, unfortunately for her, her shot uh, was too close to Mia Foster, who made the save. Now Sarah Yu with the through ball, rebound is there, but only a Woburn defender. It's close enough to it before Mia Foster picks it up. We'll see if Belmont pulls their numbers and their back line further Forward. up now with just five minutes left to just try to have more bodies in the box for shots and rebounds. Yep, I think the, uh, the players on the field are sensing the, uh, the urgency Off Belmont Sour U, so it'll be Wolverine's throw. Good win by Sarah. Good battle by Lily Hovsepian. Lily, good turn, tries to hit N Nora Goulding. Not able to connect, but ball won by Elsa Kimberly. Puts it into the box, but once again, Mia Foster is there for Wolverine. Happy to announce that a soccer night tradition is if the game ends in a tie, they play an unofficial shootout. So it might even get more exciting. <laughs> but we still have... Still got a couple minutes here. A couple minutes to see if the win becomes official. That's happened a couple times for the boys at soccer night where... It officially goes into the uh, Middlesex League and MIA as a tie, but so that the players have that great experience of doing the shootout, they play the shootout here for an unofficial win. Nice shot by mm. Cassie, again with her left. Woburn is giving her more space to go left than right, and she's had three or four left-footed shots tonight. All of them saved by Mia Foster from Woburn. Good shield by Madhavi Ramadas. So it'll be Belmont's throw. And we have uh, Anna Santos coming in for Nora Golding. Just a couple minutes left in regulation in this scoreless battle between Belmont and Woburn. Fresh with fresh legs, Anna Santos with that ball win. Nice pass from Elsa Kimberly to Dana Lear. Good win again by Elsa. Now to Sarah Yu. Burst by the Woburn defender, unable to get the cross, but she's gonna do what she's been doing best tonight, Chris. Another right. corner kick. Let's go. Maybe something like seventh or eighth time will be the charm. Yes. Let's see. Sorry, you ball in the air. Good by Cassie Griner. She created a lot of space for herself, but she wasn't able to get her Head on the ball and it goes through and then out off of a Belmont yeah. defender. So it'll be Ruburn's goal kick. Yep, good corner. Just not, not able to connect. And we'll have the second team calling a timeout. Not sure, again, which team it was, but with just a couple of minutes left, are you, if you're coach Jemmy Conch, are you saying, Let's do everything we can to put it in the net here, even if we give up risky counterattack. 
or do we want to play for the, for the penalty kicks? I'd say, uh, I mean, some of this, you, you know, you're also playing for the Middlesex League, so uh, you don't want to risk everything. Uh, but uh, I think that the, they've certainly been pressuring quite a bit. Uh, so, uh, so I think, uh, uh, you know, we can continue to do what we've been doing. You know, we subbed in Anna. I think Anna had a little bit of a rest there. So hopefully uh, she has the energy and, and Danica uh, uh, you know, she's, she's been showing t tonight that she can, uh, she's making things happen. So we'll see, we'll see, uh, we'll see how we do here. So it's going to be memorable one way or another. Either it's going to be a last minute goal and powerful celebration, or we're going to go to PKs, which are always amongst the most enjoyable ways that uh, soccer viewers like. Sometimes soccer purists just want them to play overtime until you get a real goal. <laughs> But I have to say, I'm a big fan of the PK shootout. Yeah, I think a couple of years ago, uh, the boys had a had a shootout, which was quite uh, quite exciting. The boys were not able to prevail. The Belmont boys that night, um, but the girls tonight, we'll see if they can get the better of the Woburn Tanners. So for much of this second half, the ball's been in Woburn's end. I would estimate 70, 80% of the action's been in that end. Oh, we got another corner. And just in terms of measuring corner kicks like they do on some television broadcasts, Belmont's likely had a dozen or so corner kicks and Woburn's had, I think, uh, one or two. One or two, yeah. So that shows Belmont's dominance in field of play. Sarah Yu with the kick. Referee blows the whistle, I guess, calling some sort of a pushing foul in the box on Belmont. Given the way that Anna Santos is talking with the referee, yep. I'm speculating it's that foul was on Anna Santos. Good, good pass by Sarah Yu. Lily tried to mister or redirect it to herself. Again, well defended by Woburn's D. Sadie Taylor up to Danica. Danica with the turn. Her burst of speed isn't able to win back the ball, but it'll be Belmont's throw. Anna Santos hustles, passes it to. Her teammate Sadie Taylor. Sadie throws it into the box. And we hear the triple whistle. You know what that means, Chris. I do. We're going into PK. Now, interestingly, we know that. <laughs> the coaches know that. The Soccer Night and Belmont people know that. Perhaps the players know it. But the fans here, I don't think, know that yet. So you're going to hear an eruption soon and it was just announced there will be a penalty shootout and you see some little kids yeah. jumping up and down now when they heard that so uh in terms of the game scott i thought it was a great game i thought uh, uh belmont uh had the pressure uh wolverine's uh defensive uh back four were were uh, up to the challenge um belmont did have some chances there um but uh we end in a zero zero tie uh, so officially but for the most part other than qualifying for the MIAA or maybe for Belmont if they keep on this hot streak um, you know some recognition for top of the bracket in the Middlesex League the players are going to remember this shootout yeah <laughs> that's for sure so players have different uh, teams and coaches have different strategies for shootouts some teams want to put their most confident uh, goal scorers up top to get off to a good lead. Some of them like to hold them off to the fourth or fifth, the, sometimes the highest pressure kick. So we'll see what the teams do. Um, I didn't see a coin flip, but it, from the looks of it, the both teams are going to shoot to the goal to our left. Yep, and I think this is a... I think this is the first time in four years, anyway. Uh, the girls have been in uh, in a in a shootout. 
Yep, so the goalie battle will be Martha Demas for Belmont against Mia Foster for Woburn. Mia Foster certainly has had more action in this game, but it should be a good goalie and, uh, battle. And Scott, yeah. as you said, you can hear the uh, you can hear the crowd getting hyped up here. Yeah. And we'll have one of our camera crew be ready on the replays here because we have that technology now to see either a great save by the goalie or a scoring shot. And you can see the uh, the camera cameramen on the field getting ready to uh, take in the action. Getting great angles over there. We thank you for tuning in for the exciting conclusion of the first of two games, the doubleheader here for Soccer Night in Belmont. Now we'll have at least, you know, so both teams will uh, slot five players to take the shootout. So I think uh, I think the coin flip is uh, is happening now. So it's Sarah, you, your daughter, calling it against Woburn. They'll probably give Woburn as the away team the call. Someone sprinting across the field there. Sometimes you see sprinters in sports <laughs> games. At least he's got all That's of his, right. I was all say. Of his uh, <laughs> outside clothes on there. Right. So I'm not sure who won the toss, but it's going to be Belmont who shoots first, hoping to try to put the pressure. Is that Lily Hofsepian or is it 17 Ashley Waters? I think Waters? that's Ashley Waters. Number 17, Ashley Waters will be first for Belmont, jumping up and down, making eye contact with Mia Foster. Ashley Water, here's the whistle, puts it on, and it's saved. Nice save. What a save by Mia Foster. That was a solid save. <laughs> and now we'll see if Martha Demas can equal that save. So Belmont misses its first attempt. Good shot, though, but um, Mia Foster I think she was, was just leaning, in the, right, leaning yep. in the right direction there. So can you see the number here? It's number two. So this is Nicole Ganji for Woburn. Uh, quite a strong player. Standing to the side of the ball. And now Ganji with the kick. And she sails it and it hits the crossbar for the football goalposts. Belmont will take that. The adrenaline quite high for all these players. Quite high for you and me, too. We stay 0-0. <laughs> zero, zero. And now coming up for Belmont is number seven, Nora Gold, Goulding. Lines it up to kick with her left. Now Goulding with the shot, and it scores! Nice. Belmont Nora, won. Nora kept it on the ground there. Belmont one, Woburn zero. She gets the hug, she gets the high fives. Nice shot by Nora Goulding. Goalie guessed right again, but Nora's shot had enough pace to just get underneath. Chris, you gotta help me on the, the number here. I think that's four. So if maybe. that's four, it's Leah Finn for Woburn. And the kick, and it's an incredible save with her fingertips by Martha Demas. Beautiful. That was a great save. So it remains 1-0. Lily Hosepian. Number 13 for Belmont. Trying to put Belmont up by two. Lily bounces, Lily Hosepian shoots into the corner. Great, great PK. Unsavable. Unsavable. Belmont goes up two to zero in this penalty shootout. Now, is this number one? Yes, number one. So number one, Caitlin Clark for Woburn. 
seconds. Martha Demas, Ka Caitlin Clark kicks it in and she sails it high. So now Belmont has a chance, up two, if they score their next one. It'll be a Belmont victory. And coming up to take it, Sarah you. you want to call this one, Chris, or you sure. want me to call it? It's, it's all yours. <laughs> okay, Sarah with the kick. Sizing it up. Waiting for the whistle. Sarah Yu kicks it in, she scores, giving Belmont the victory. And Harris Field goes nuts. Congratulations, Chris. Oh, what a game. It's always great to see what the players game. that you know come out victorious, but certainly to see your daughter put in that penalty that's kick. What does a, that mean to you? Pretty memorable, pretty memorable. I would say all the, uh, I think all the Belmont uh, uh, PK players, uh, some great goals there. And uh, Martha Demas on the on the one save there was uh, was outstanding. And in fact, I think I think Wilbur knew that Mar Martha is such a good goal goalkeeper that it, it forced them to uh, to either shoot above the goal or above the goal. So uh, great I've game. never seen a PK shootout where one team doesn't score. Yeah, you know, so uh, they like you said knew that they had to be precise and sometimes that precision just it yep. makes you overthink it a little bit and uh but you know when we talk about such an exciting game and there'll be a player of the game announcement there were many good players throughout this game and a zero zero tie in regulation it's hard yeah so 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 great game great battle uh, both sides, 0-0 uh, tie in the books for MIAA, but uh, uh, certainly for uh, all the girls on the Belmont uh, soccer team, uh, a great victory. Uh, and uh, very exciting here for, uh, for Belmont, and uh, uh, there'll be a little ceremony here. And so we have the player of the match being awarded. Late-breaking winner is your daughter, Sarah Yu, uh, for winning the game for Belmont. Sarah and Dana Lair in the second half on that right side. We called both of their names all the time. Sarah took, you know, eight or nine PKs. Several of them were good scoring opportunities. Her players, her, her teammates uh, mob her. <laughs> and now the captains for Belmont get the honor of raising the Phoenix Cup. This is so cool. It always leads to great photos. We got the photographer right inside. Pedro Santos, John Carson, Sean Goulding, I think, are all part yeah. of it in some way down there. And I would say the captains there, the four captains there, uh, all really contributed tonight uh, in a great game. And uh, just a great scene here at Harris Field. And now they get mobbed. And, you know, if this game was 7-0, you wouldn't have the celebration now that it came down to the end and they won it in PKs. There's been a theme for... Uh, years here at Soccer Night in Belmont. We live for the nights we remember, and this was certainly a night that these players will remember when they look back at their high school years and certainly their high school soccer career. Congratulations to the Belmont girls varsity soccer team. Yeah, and I think it's uh, it's great for the kids to see this, and uh, as as we've talked about, really the, the you know the the, the kids in uh, second soccer and youth soccer, you know they see this game and they get inspired and uh, to continue to play soccer and uh, as, you, as you talked about, you know, can see themselves playing here in, uh, in years to come in the high school, at the high school level. And now we're gonna pause, see if we can pick up the mic from Adam Pritchard. And I might do a little play by play as we're doing this. Adam is speaking about the contributions of coach Paul Graham, who coached the Belmont girls varsity soccer for more than three decades, both teams are coming together to salute Paul Graham. I do believe this is a total surprise for Paul. <laughs> Adam says he's had the honor of growing up in town, playing sports at Belmont High just like po Coach Paul Graham did back in the 60s. Tonight, as the athletic director, have a new chapter for soccer night. 
and there's going to be a new award given each soccer night entitled the Paul Graham Sportsmanship Award. Says many here know Paul Graham and many of the great things that he's done. He began as an assistant coach in 1975. Got involved in Belmont Varsity Lacrosse and the Belmont Recreation Commission. One of the most winningest coaches of all time at Belmont High School starting in 1992 through three years ago. Over 300 victories. Eight trips to the Division North, two finals for Paul Graham as coach. And he just said that Paul Graham, many people don't know, was part of the founding of Belmont Youth Soccer. And he helped start the parent group, Friends of Belmont Soccer, so critical to supporting the three varsity, the, the, all the varsity soccer teams here. And without Paul, we certainly wouldn't have Soccer Night in Belmont. Now Adam is talking about the other folks who are going to speak a little bit about Coach Paul Graham's impact, not only on Belmont soccer and Belmont high school, but all Belmont athletics. Now this is Jess Smith from the Boosters. She coaches field hockey and had to share the field many times in practice with Paul Graham. Paul Graham would often stand behind her bench and cheer for her, her players. Adam Pritchard is not only athletic director, we'll see how good of a technical troubleshooter he is, Chris. <laughs> he wears many hats. Perhaps the rain has shorted out the mic. Anyway, she would look behind the bench and she would see Paul Graham Thank you for joining us here on this Soccer Night in Belmont special ceremony in between games where several Belmont High varsity coaches are speaking uh, in honor of Coach Paul Graham who coached Belmont Girls Varsity Soccer for 30 years from 1972 or 80, 82 maybe <laughs> until <laughs> 2022. And now he's an ass assistant coach to, um, for Woburn, and they may have just announced the first recipient of the Paul Graham Sportsmanship Award, and I think that they gave it to number one, yep. Caitlin Clark for Woburn. Nice shot of Paul Graham. As I've yep. said, Paul uh, impacted my family in a very great way as a coach for four years of my daughter on the <coughs> Belmont varsity girls soccer team and Paul was an excellent coach when Allie was playing 
you know, when she made the team as a freshman, he told her the significance of what that was, and he made sure that she was ready to contribute to the team as a freshman. And then when Allie had a uh, ACL injury her sophomore year, Paul was one of the first calls we received um, after getting that news, and he came and visited the next day, and he visited many times uh, to check in on Allie. Then junior year, Allie was able to play, thanks uh, thanks to that, and had a good season. And then senior year, she tore her other ACL, and that was devastating in senior year for Allie at first. And Paul said to her, now I have my assistant coach. <laughs> and Allie, how, how she grew in leadership because of Paul giving her that opportunity that, that year, and Allie has continued that as she's gone on to college. And I'll, not every coach would do that, but Paul was always a player's first coach during our experience in we're grateful, and I know uh, hundreds of families who have had the opportunity to play for him in Belmont have done that, and I do think that um, the Woburn players probably are now building their stories of Paul Graham. I know Sarah yeah. only played for him for one year, Chris, but any any yeah. any insights or stories? Yeah, I would say uh, that 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 first year that Sarah did play. Uh, she she tried to do this. Uh, she tried to play in the marching band uh, and play soccer, which was a little challenging. So uh, I do know that uh, one time uh, she did have to leave a, a game uh, in Wilburn, actually, uh, before the end of the game. But, uh, you know, I think Coach Graham was really understanding uh, of the fact that, uh, you know, Sarah wanted to try to do both and uh, was really, uh, uh, really receptive to that. So he was a great supporter of, uh, you know, the kids. And uh, uh, it's great to see that uh, Belmont honors, honors uh, uh, Coach Graham with this. And I think this is a really nice touch, uh, the Sportsmanship Award. So that'll wrap it up here from Harris Field. Uh, we're so glad you were able to join us as the girls continue to celebrate with the Phoenix Cup. The official score tonight is a 0-0 tie, but what these girls will remember and tell stories for the rest of their lives is they won on the PKs 3-0 with uh, Sarah Yu uh, scoring uh, the, the winning goal and becoming the player of the match. So stay tuned here on Belmont Media for the boys game. But for Chris Yu, this is Scott Landry saying thanks so much for joining us and talk to you in a few minutes.